Hi there, welcome to my animated stories. I'm your host, Fabian. Today's story takes place on Halloween night, Saturday, October 31st, 2009. This is a legendary story among friends, one that comes up in conversation now and then, so I think it's the perfect story to begin this animated series with. The main hero of our story is my friend Mario. Some of you know him well. The rest of the cast consists of his North Providence childhood friends, Ricky, Joey Z, Aunt Mac, and Raynone. Also starring Corey C and Mike V and some girls I don't remember. I think one of them was Ricky's ex. On this night, Mario was working his last shift as a waiter at the well-established Italian restaurant on Federal Hill known as Angelo's Civita Farnese. This was his last night after eight years of working there, so he felt he needed to celebrate by starting the party early to drown his emotions. When I met Mario near closing time, somewhere around 10 p.m., he already had several Goldschlager nips in him. He had been drinking them out of a plastic baby bottle that would soon be making part of his Halloween costume. Once he clocked out, we both drove our cars to Raynaud's house, where we met with Joey Z and Aunt Mac and some other people, most notably this guy named Corey. He'll come into play in our story later on. So yeah, while at Raynaud's, Mario proceeds to change into his costume. It was a pink baby girl, complete with the baby bottle around his neck. I think he had poured an entire bottle of Goldschlager into it before he left Angelo's. His counterpart, Aunt Mac, was dressed as a baby boy, Joey Z as a priest, and Raynone as Guns N' Roses' Axl Rose. Ricky, who would meet with us later that night, was dressed as Slash. As for myself, well, I borrowed Joey Z's double XL EMT uniform shirt to be a medic. I can't remember why I had shown up to a Halloween night without a costume, but the only thing that makes sense to me is that this was a last minute decision to join these guys and I didn't originally plan on going out, which makes the story even more incredible. Basically I shouldn't have been there. Anyways, back to Renones. There was some pre-gaming and then I remember Joey Z giving a brief speech and a blessing. After that we were off in Joey Z's SUV to a place that used to exist in downtown Providence called McFadden's. This place is long gone, but back then, the inside was divided into a big dance floor room and a smaller room with a separate bar. At one point in the night, Mike V, the Angelo's bartender that was working with Mario that same night, showed up at McFadden's. The story goes that Mario, very drunk by this point, was overly excited to see Mike had actually shown up, so they started doing Jaeger bombs. I think some of us were with Mario in the main dance floor when the DJ started playing Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine. I will never forget Mario's face the moment he heard that song. He had this mischievous look what I'm about to do face with a giant smirk. Mario then ripped off his diaper and shirt, threw the diaper on the ground and stuffed his shirt in his boxers and was just left with sneakers and socks and then started going ham. After that, I believe I left the dance floor to go to the smaller room. Mario soon followed, probably because no one would dance with an almost naked, hairy, sweaty guy. But as he entered the smaller room, he decided to make a stop by the bar, except he didn't want to wait in line. Instead, he reached over the counter and grabbed a bottle of Southern Comfort, then passed it around to everyone in the vicinity. Luckily, he was able to put it back without being seen by the bartenders. This is where things started to get bad. For Mario mostly. Some time passed in the night and it was getting closer to one-ish. I remember being with Ricky or one of the guys and then asking them if they had seen Mario because I had not seen him for a while. Everyone was tipsy or drunk and I remember they just kind of kept talking and deciding what bar to go next. But no one was really looking for Mario. Except maybe Ricky. But at this time he was dealing with some relationship problems so he couldn't really help look for Mario. They all decided it was time to leave and go to Zona Lounge, and like McFadden's, this place no longer exists. When we stepped outside of McFadden's, I vaguely remember Ricky and crew running into more friends who said that they had seen Mario sitting on the curb just chilling. I believe they said they talked to him, but I don't recall if anything else happened. In the end, it made no difference because everyone was set on going to Zona. It was located back on Federal Hill, so we split up into two separate cars. Joey Z and myself in his SUV, and Ricky took the rest of the guys in his car. I believe Ricky was having an argument with someone at this point, and he almost ran them over as he left the parking lot. 
I didn't know how to get to Zona, so I relied on drunk Joy Z to give me directions. As we drove around for a few blocks in downtown, we came to a stop sign. The street in front of us had been closed off with barriers. As I was about to turn right, a car drove past us and ran into the barrier. That's when an undercover police van pulled from behind us and turned on the lights. I just remember Joey Z just being all calm and telling me to turn right and just keep going. He was also telling me a bunch of paramedic and ambulance stories as we drove to the lounge and just kept asking me if I was following the story. I don't remember much about the time in the lounge except for Ricky being the only other person worried about Mario at this point. Which at the time made sense to me because I thought they were actually cousins. Side note, they weren't cousins. But that's what I thought for three years because Mario had introduced Ricky to me as his cousin. You know, his cuz, his cuzzo, his cuz. But he literally said cousin. So that's what I believed for three years. So yeah, anyways, Ricky eventually got a hold of Mario on his cell. But Mario didn't say any specifics as to where he was. He actually sounded upset, if I recall, and hung up on us three times. After that, we couldn't reach him again. I'll explain why later on. For now, let's get back to the lounge and how it was almost 2 a.m., which meant they were about to close. Out of frustration due to not finding Mario and no one else caring, Ricky said to the guys, I need to take Fabian home because he comes out to hang with us and has to put up with all this BS. But Ricky ended up having a fight with his girl and eventually left by himself. So I had to catch a ride with the rest of the guys, but the problem was that they were all tipsy. And this dude Corey, who I didn't know, somehow ended up with the keys to Joey's SUV. He was definitely too drunk to drive, so I was asking him to give me the keys, because no way I was letting him or any of them drive home. I should point out that I had only had four beers throughout the whole night, so I was definitely the only one sober by this time. Anyways, somehow I convinced Corey to ask Joey who should drive the SUV since that was his car. I took a gamble because Joey didn't know me as well back then, but by some miracle, and I still remember the pitch of Joey's voice, he said, Fabian, and just like that, Corey gave me the keys. So Joey, Corey, Aunt Mac, Raynone, and myself were on the way back to North Providence. That's when I noticed the empty gas tank light on. Joey C. assured me that it was fine and that it was a bad sensor, and luckily he was right. A few minutes later, all the talking came to a complete stop when Raynone shouted, Shut up, shut up, or something like that, telling us to be quiet. He said, It's Mario's mom calling. I remember exactly Raynone's reaction and how he sobered up right away. Everyone was quiet as he took the call. I could hear Mario's mom yelling over the phone. Mario had freaking showed up back home practically naked and incoherent. Raynone was being asked by Mrs. D how the heck had this happened. But we had no idea what to tell her since we had not seen Mario in the last three hours or so. We told Mrs. D that we'd bring Mario's car back home after I dropped off all the guys. So I dropped off Aunt Mac and Corey at some hot dog stand or something that was still open at 3 a.m. and they walked home. Then I dropped off Raynone while he got his car to pick me up at Joey's. And then we went back to Raynone's to get Mario's BMW. Then we drove the cars to Mario's parents. When we got there, Raynon told me to let him speak to Mr. D since he knew him the longest. We rang the doorbell around 4 a.m. and I will never forget Mr. D's face. He slightly opened the door and yelled, What? He was obviously pissed off. We handed him Mario's car keys, wallet, and camera and there was nothing else said. Raynon drove me back to his house to pick up my car. I'm pretty sure at this point I was texting or calling my girlfriend at the time and my sister to let them know that I was still alive. Remember, I wasn't even planning on going out. So yeah, that was the end of Halloween night. For me, I owe you the other part of the story from Mario's point of view, which I'm able to do because we found some chats from November 1st that shed some light of what occurred the night after he got kicked out of McFadden's. In reality, Ricky, Mario, and myself think that Mario did not get kicked out because someone did see him grab the bottle off the bar or because he was practically naked. What we think most likely happened is that Mario got really upset when he didn't hear back from his love interest. At some point that night, while in the club, we think he texted his co-worker, Kim, three simple words, I love you. 
Now, if you know Kim, she was very likely asleep by now. So we think Mario got upset that she didn't reply right away and walked out. That's what most likely happened. He must have decided then that he was just going to walk home. So while walking home, he texted again saying, answer me, Kim. Except he had a little typo there. But this time she did text back, but it was not the words that Mario wanted to hear. Apparently, she said she loved him as a friend. Now, one of two things happened at this moment. If you recall back in 2009, Interstate I-95 near the police station and homeless shelter was under construction. So we believe Mario got Kim's reply while he was making his way across I-95 through the two giant dirt mounds and he either dropped the phone or most likely read Kim's reply and just chucked his iPhone away. Either way, Mario no longer had a phone and Kim was left thinking Mario was ignoring her all weekend. Mario then made it back to Angelo's, then eventually walked down Dean Street where he got picked up by some random couple at 3 a.m. This dude named Jerome was nice enough not to rob or kidnap him and offered him a ride home. Since Jerome was with his girl, Mario said he figured it was safe to get a ride and at this point, why not? Mario's chat history shows that Jerome kept looking at the back seat and telling Mario, Damn, dog. <laughs> so, can you guys just picture that for a second? That was my favorite part of the chat history. Mario didn't tell Jerome exactly where he lived because even though he was drunk, he knew better. So he was dropped off a couple blocks away and just walked home. So yeah, that's how Mario got home safe and sound, almost naked and phoneless. The next day, he woke up with a sore body probably from a couple of falls while he crossed the dirt mounds, and he realized he needed to buy a new iPhone. So I think we were all glad everyone made it home safe that night before. I never did see that guy Corey or Mike V from Angelos again. Raynone grew up to become a doctor and moved overseas. And Mac kept being good with numbers and gambling big on sports. Joy Z stopped being an EMT and tried out for a firefighter, and I think he's still trying. Ricky eventually started a band, but now he has a family, so he only plays casually. And Kim, his co-worker, well, she eventually became his wife. And as for me, I never went out with that group again for Halloween. And I probably shouldn't have gone out with them to Hampton Beach either. But that's a different story for another time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and take care.